whatever we do as policymakers, whatever we do with these kinds of very valuable networks that we have, we always need to remember that we should try and do what we can to ensure that we affect the lives of the marginalized and the voiceless in our midst. Otherwise, all the policies and all the promises and all the things that we claim we have on paper are going to mean absolutely nothing. I would like to move straight into some um, ideas I would like to share with you that I think will help us think about how we can address these issues going forward when we are talking about women's empowerment, HIV AIDS and reducing maternal mortality in our country. First of all, I think we need to ensure that we all have a deep understanding of what it means to empower women. We can empower women in different ways. And for a lot of people, the only way to empower women is providing them with access to economic empowerment via microcredit. Microcredit is important, but it is not the only thing, and it is not the only way. We have to have a comprehensive and integrated approach towards women's empowerment. And that should include, yes, addressing women's economic empowerment and livelihoods, and if it is through microcredit or access to financing for those who need large amounts of money, that is definitely a, the way to go. We also need very strong legislative and policy frameworks to ensure that we can have um, legal guarantees that protect women and girls in so many different circumstances. And I'd like to refer, I will talk about this a bit more shortly, but I'd like to refer, for example, to Lagos State here that has laws, Lagos State has a law on domestic violence. But unfortunately, not just domestic violence, all forms of violence against women, but unfortunately, this state also records some of the highest statistics of abuse against women in the country. So it, again, it means there's a gap between what we have on paper and the lives of ordinary women. Another way we can empower women is to ensure that we include more, we have more women in decision making. We are all familiar with um, the clamor to get more women into governance at all levels, the clamor for at least 30 to 35 percent of women in decision making. These arguments are not just arguments made to ensure that a few women are favored of that political posts and positions are given out to favored women, wives, mistresses, and so on. The point we are making when we say we want more women in decision making is that so far, men have had the opportunity to lead and to rule. And um, the result has been, with all due respect, has been um, a mixed bag. We think we can do better as leaders in Africa. We think we need new voices. We need new faces, we need fresh ideas. And the best way to go about that is to bring in these new voices and faces and they shouldn't be those of the old usual suspects. So that's why we are saying we want more women in decision making, but not women for women's sake. Not women for women's sake, we also insist that they be women who, bring, who add value to governance and are not just making up the numbers, and women who can offer up ideas for transformation. The other key area I'd like to address is how we can all join forces to ensure that we reduce the, we, we mitigate the impact of HIV AIDS on our communities. Unfortunately, the HIV AIDS um, pandemic is not receding. When um, those of us um, who belong to a particular generation first heard of um, HIV AIDS, the attitude we had at the time was this is something that will go after a while. A cure will be found and will be okay. You'll be able to take a vaccine or take the required medication and everything will be fine. Unfortunately, that has not been the case. HIV AIDS still remains with us. There are some alarming statistics that have been put forward by AIDS experts, particularly from the United Nations, and we need to take these statistics very seriously. For example, here in Nigeria, between 1991, when we had the first nationwide survey on HIV AIDS, our HIV prevalence then was 5.8%. 
in, as of 2010, it dropped slightly to 4.1%. I, I however insist that this is still very alarming for a country that has a population in excess of 150 million people. A HIV rates of 4.1%, for example, represent most of the HIV AIDS statistics in the whole of Southern Africa. Because if you look at those countries, they have countries with very small populations. And here we have one country, Nigeria, the giant of Africa, with um, a HIV pre prevalence rate of 4.1%. It is way too high. The 2010 United Nations General Assembly report, therefore, has said that there are 2,980,000 people in Nigeria living with HIV AIDS. And therefore, after South Africa, Nigeria has the largest number of people living with HIV AIDS in Africa. This should give us all cause for concern. We have had a, lot of, a number of responses um, at um, state level and at national level to address HIV AIDS. And many of you as professionals and as Rotarians have been actively engaged in the struggle against HIV AIDS as well. I'd like to suggest that we try to develop some more robust strategies to address the key drivers of the HIV AIDS pandemic. Why do we still have um, such uh, a large prevalence rate in our country, for example? I think to begin with, we still have a very low perception of personal risk. A lot of people, especially young people, who unfortunately happen to, the, happen to be the ones who are most badly hit by the pandemic now, believe that they are not at risk. They believe AIDS is something somebody else has, but not them. I would like to also suggest that we try and end our culture of denial. We should stop denying that, it is, that AIDS is with us. And we should also try and make voluntary and frequent testing part of the work that we do, wherever we are whether as association members or civil society members or employers or employees. If we don't know our status, there is no way we can um, control the HIV AIDS pandemic. The other drivers of the pandemic include multiple concurrent sexual partnerships. And here, we, we are service about sex. That's what we do here. Or this no sir. Or this no man. I want to give you this. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Before you leave us well. Let me also present this to you, Ma, as the eighth club president of this Omali building, for you to have come here to deliver this lecture all the way from Ikiti. Ma, we are so delighted. God Almighty will honor you. Amen. In all scheme of things, you will not find wanting. Amen. And as you go back to the kitty, God will show his mercy upon you. Amen. And the presence of God will not depart of your life Amen. and your family. Amen. Thank you very much, man. Sorry, I'm just here on time. Your Excellency, I know your father was a Rotarian. Two of us. Two. I don't know. Thank you. Yes. money.